Hello everyone and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. Today we're going to discuss at a high level exactly what SAS macros are and how you can get started using simple macros within your SAS program. So our agenda for today, we're going to discuss what a macro is and the two main types of macros which are global macros and local macros. And then we're going to talk about how we can create simple macro programs right within SAS. So a macro is going to be utilized to help us reduce code repetition. It makes our code a lot more readable and cleaner because if we know that we want to do some repeated analysis, we can just store that analysis as a macro and call on that macro as many times as we would like in our actual program. And so you're going to get a chance to see how macros are actually able to be assigned to hold a value and you can call on that macro over and over and over again. So there are two main types of macros, which is global and local. So global macros can be accessed by any SAS program. If you open up a SAS program right now on your computer, you would have access to this certain type of global macro that is built inside our SAS environment. So those are things like post name, the day of the week, the time that you run a report, all of that is built into SAS where it's just going to get those values straight from your computer. Local macros are pretty custom. Those are the macros that you make within a SAS program, and you're only able to use them within that single SAS program. So let's actually look at some examples to kind of drive this home. So we're gonna start with built-in global SAS macros. So as you see here, there are macros. They normally have an ampersand before it or an and symbol. And I have a macro for the date, I have a macro for the time, the day of the week, the host name, and a lot more macros. So in the example on the right hand side of the screen, we're looking at a data set inside the SAS help program. And we have a title where we use the macro ampersand sys date, and it prints off the actual date that we ran the report because this is actually built inside of SAS itself. It is considered a global macro. So let's actually hop over to SAS Studio and look at this. And I'm gonna expand my libraries on the left-hand side of the screen. And within the SAS help folder, you have access to tons of data set. SAS On Demand for Academics is free to download. I highly recommend that you sign up for the account. And I have video one on all about how to do SAS On Demand for Academics. So let's look at these macros. So I'm just gonna run a basic proc print and I'm gonna do a data set. So I'm just gonna do sashelp.cars and then I'm gonna do a title and I'm gonna put it in double quotes so it can actually recognize that macro. And I'm gonna say today is, and I'm gonna do ampersand SYS. And as soon as I do that, notice that the macro variables come up and they give you tons of different macros that you can actually utilize, right? And so in this case, I want to use the macro sys day. So I'm just going to do sys day. And I'm actually going to do run and run this, right? And now I have my report where it says today is Tuesday, right? I can add another macro in front of this and actually put um, a sys date after this macro. So I'm going to do ampersand SYS and do the date. And now when I run this, it's going to have, today is Tuesday, July 18th, 2023. Okay, so these are built into any program. It's called a global macro. They are built right into SAS. They pop up once you add the ampersand sys date within SAS On Demand for Academics. Great, right, so let's continue. All right, so local macros are going to be a macro that's stored in a variable after the percent let syntax, okay? You call on that variable name after the ampersand to use it in any of your code. This creation of local macros 
macros can be very, very complex. So we're going to dive further into local macros in a subsequent video. So in this example here, I have the ampersand let. Notice how it turns blue. So that means that SAS recognizes that I'm about to create a macro. I call the macro sex. So that is the name of the variable. And now I am storing sex to be equal to capital M for male. And so now when I do a data step to filter my data, I have if sex equals ampersand sex. And this is going to call the value that I have for sex and return M's. Now, this could be beneficial for um, to make my code more readable. Say for instance, I had a categorical variable that had 11 categories and I wanted to create different data sets for all 11 categories. I can just change the category up here in my actual macro and run the same data step down here without ever changing the data step itself. So no need to copy and paste 10 data steps all that I have to do is create that actual macro. So let's see how this actually works. We're gonna hop over into SAS Studio. I'm gonna stick with that cars data set. So I'm gonna double click on cars on the left-hand side of my computer or screen. And I see that there's different makes that I have, right? So I'm going to do percent let, and I'm gonna call this car underscore make and i'm going to originally assign this to audi okay so i have a variable named car underscore make i'm assigning it to audi so now i'm going to do a data set that is going to call make underscore analysis it's going to read from that sas help dot cars data set and it's going to filter and i'm going to say if and this is actually called in SAS help the make with a capital M. So I'm going to have if make is equal to that. Macro variable. So I'm going to call ampersand car make. Notice that it pops up for me. It recognizes that I've already created this macro. And then I'm going to run it. So this data set should filter my data based off of whatever I have stored in my macro variable. So if I highlight both of these lines so that it can run the macro first, in my output data, I get all the makes to be Audi. Right? So now with my code, instead of copy and paste in the data step, I can change this to Acura. I can rerun. And now I get my report for all Acura. Okay, so this is going to allow me to do analysis so that way I don't have to hard code anything in my data step. I can just assign a macro variable called car make and it's able to do that filtering for me. So let's hop back over to the presentation. So that is our local macros. I also can create a local macro that can store all numeric variables. You do not have to do this underscore numeric underscore SAS recognizes that as you want to return all numeric variables or you only want to look at numeric variables underscore character underscore means that you only want to look at character variables okay so in this example here let's hop back over and I'm going to have another macro. I'm going to do percent let because that lets us assign a macro. And I'm going to call this nums vars. And I'm going to set it to underscore numeric underscore. And now when I expand or look at my car's data set, anything that has a one, two, three next to it, it should only return. So I shouldn't get the make. I shouldn't get the model. I shouldn't get the origin. I should only get the numbers in this data set. So let's see. So in this case, I'm going to do a proc print, and I'm going to have the data set equal to that car's data set that we looked at. And then I'm going to do a if, or I'm just going to do a var statement, and then I'm going to call that macro, and nums underscore vars, and then I'm going to run this. So this should only print out the numeric variables in my data set. So when I run this, 
Here, I only get the numbers in my data set, right? So this is a nice little trick if you only want to look at numeric variables for like a linear regression, or if you're running a proc core and proc core only works on numeric variables, things of that nature. I most certainly do not have to store it as a macro. I could do underscore numeric underscore just like so without running that macro and it's still going to be able to return it. But I like to assign it for a macro just for cleaner. Okay, so let's hop back into our presentation. So this is a nice little trick. Now, the next is macro programs. So macro programs are going to start with a percent macro statement, and it's going to end with a percent min statement. And in between these two statements, you can put any code. You can put proc steps, data steps, do loops, anything that you want in between these two statements. You can call on that same macro program with different inputs, just like you would call a function and run different arguments. You can call a macro program and run different arguments and inputs. So let's look at this. So in this case, I'm trying to create multiple visuals based off of my categorical variable. So in this case, I have percent macro and percent mins, right? Because it's gonna start with your percent macro statement and end with your percent mins. And in between this statement, I'm doing a proc SG plot. So in this case, I want to create horizontal bar charts based off of a macro variable. So I'm going to call the macro program org underscore type, and I'm going to pass in cat bar. And then at, outside of the program, if I call percent org type, which is the same macro name, I can run any variable in here that's in my data set, and it's going to create a bar chart for me, any categorical variable. So notice in this case, I pass origin. So now I get a bar chart of origin. Down below, same program, I pass type, and now I get a bar chart of type, right? So this is very, very, very beneficial. So let's see how we can actually do this right inside SAS itself. All right, so let's go ahead and try these macro programs right inside SAS. So I'm gonna do a percent macro. I'm gonna call this VizVar to know that this is the macro for making visualizations. I'm gonna call a cat bar as the argument. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a percent min since I know that it must be start with my macro statement and end with my min statement. In between this, I'm going to go ahead and write my code. So I'm gonna do the proc SG plot. I'm going to do the data equal to that same data set that we looked at, says help.cars. I wanna do a horizontal bar chart and I'm gonna call on that argument with the ampersand, so cat bar. So notice that there is no ampersand in the parentheses, but there is an ampersand when I'm actually using it within my proc step here. So then I'm going to end that with a run just for fun. And then now I can call on that same macro program. So I'm gonna go percent this var. And now I'm going to look at a categorical variable that I wanna look at. So let's say we wanna look at make because that is category. I'm gonna put make, make sure I end it with a semicolon. And now when I run it, I'm able to get a nice little visual about the makes in my data set, right? So I see that Chevrolet, Volvo, and Mercedes are some of the popular makes right within my data set. If I want to change this to another categorical variable like origin, no need for me to copy and paste the SG plot. I can just go ahead and call that macro right there and I get a new visual. So this is how we create very simple macro programs. We're gonna have to start with the percent macro statement and with the percent mint. Whatever we want to do comes in between both of those using an ampersand to call the argument of our program. And then we can call the program name, which is visvar, pass through a variable in the data set and get out some awesome visuals. So let us continue. And that is the end of part one. So. Hopefully you got a quick introduction of the benefits of using macros. You know the difference between global and local macros, and you can get started with making your own macro programs. 
please like, comment, and subscribe to this video. Thank you so much for watching Learning with Jelly. Bye-bye.